crackhead Barney. Uh, well, welcome uh, to Uncensored. Hey, uh, hey, Pierce! I've been waiting for you, Pierce fucking Morgan! Okay. I wore my diaper today for you, Pierce. Do you like it? Uh, not, not particularly, no. Do you want to sit down? Piers Morgan, who I believe still self-identifies as a journalist, tried to have a serious and productive exchange on his show with someone named Crackhead Barney, and it went about as well as you'd expect. Now, he brought her on in response to a video that she uploaded to Twitter that went viral where she harangued Alex Baldwin and tried to get him to say free Palestine and fuck Israel, and this is kind of her shtick. She trolls a lot of different events namely right-wing events, and she tries to out-crazy them. She also does these ambush interviews with regular people and also celebrities and public figures. She's done this to Bill de Blasio, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the QAnon shaman. And there's a Vice documentary about her where she talks about her tactics out of character if you want to watch that. But she's not really trying to make any substantive political points here. She's just trolling. Now, her Alec Baldwin video went viral at the same time that a different video of somebody else confronting a public figure went viral. Eric Adams was confronted on a plane over his support for Israel. And these videos of individuals protesting public figures are gaining popularity because the pro-Palestine protests on college campuses across the country is currently what's dominating the national news cycle as we speak. So Piers Morgan kind of wanted to talk about all of this. And he brought on some people to kind of debate the subject, including Hassan Piker. And I think that what he wanted to do was portray the pro-Palestinian protesters as unreasonable. Hence why he brought on crackhead Barney to use that as an example of anti-Israel protests. But I mean, somebody who is a shit poster just randomly going after a celebrity, that's not the same as the woman who protested Eric Adams because he's an elected public official, right? He makes public policy, whereas Alec Baldwin does not. So to say that these are the same, that's pretty disingenuous. To say that, you know, the crackhead Barney uh, viral video is akin to these student protesters on college campuses, like, that's not what Piers Morgan is explicitly saying, but it's kind of the implication here. It's the takeaway if you watch it, right? That's kind of what he wants to prime you to think about. Now, we'll get to the panel with Hassan Piker, but first, let's talk about Crackhead Barney, because as you're going to see, Piers Morgan is like an NPC, and he has these pre-written dialogue tree options in his head that he is incapable of deviating away from. So even though it's clear she's committed to the bit, she's not going to break character, he doesn't adjust he just keeps trying to ask her these serious pre-planned questions when it's not working. And of course, it didn't turn out well. In fact, here's how it turned out. Yes, do you see the damage that Alec did to me? Do you see the damage? Look at my arms. Look at my arms, Pierce. Look at my neck. I was maimed by a white man on Monday. Don't do this to me, Pierce. It's too early in the morning, Pierce. Not the wig. Your wig's come off. <laughs> I, it's not a wig, Pierce. It's my hair. I'm a white woman. I identify as a white woman. Let me ask you seriously, if I may, for a moment. Because you're trying to make a serious point, yes. I presume, with Alec Baldwin. Two hours later. What you haven't explained to the audience, oh. and I've given you the chance repeatedly, is why you did what you did and why you think what you're doing now does anything but make a mockery of all these people dying in you Gaza. Because that's what you're doing. Uh, that's that. Look, Pierce, you're trying to spin this into some bullshit. I know exactly what you're doing, Pierce. No, I no, hear tactics, you are. You're you British, are. You're fucking annoying. You eat tea and crumpets. Mm. You have your pinky in the fucking air. You salute the queen. Fuck the crown. Fuck Buckingham Palace. Now I'm getting angry. I think, honestly, crackhead, you are honestly pathetic. Yes. This is and one of the most pathetic things I've ever had to endure. And you're calling me a in crackhead. The long, Pierce, illustrious history you're of uncensored. a black woman a crackhead. Uh, that's your name. I kid you not, the interview went on like that for almost 10 minutes, where he'd ask a question, she'd say something silly and absurd, and then he'd try to ask the same serious question again and really try to get her to answer in a serious way when she has made it abundantly clear she's not going to answer in a serious way. She's trolling you. So what are we doing here? So finally, he cut her off, and once he dismissed Barney, he feigned shock at how absurd the whole spectacle was that... 
he created. And, and like, I feel like he knows that if he's going to bring on somebody named Crackhead Barney, the interview is going to go in the exact way that it did. But yet he pretended to be shocked. And I think that Hassan basically said what we were all thinking while watching it. Now, I tried to conduct a serious interview. She obviously wasn't interested in doing that, wanted to turn the whole thing into a foul mouth rant and joke and performative thing. Fine. Uh, that's entirely her right to do it. Um, but what did you think of these uh, harassings, not just by her, but by other people, of public figures? You tried to conduct a serious you know, interview with crackhead Barbie? Right? I mean, it is so absurd that Piers Morgan expects us to believe that he was seriously trying to engage in good faith with somebody named Crackhead Barney. Shut the fuck up, Piers. He wasn't interested in a substantive conversation with Crackhead Barney about, I don't know, the political effectiveness of ambush interviews. He just wanted a viral moment, as evidenced by the title where he says that she unleashes on him and, you know, the clips that he shared on Twitter. He was looking for a viral moment. And mission accomplished because I'm talking about it. You're watching the video of me talking about it. This is the goal of Piers Morgan. And that's fine, right? But what bothers me is that he will set up these ridiculous debates under the pretense of journalism and important conversations when everyone knows he's just engagement farming, which doesn't necessarily make him that much different from an individual like Crackhead Barney who will say and do anything to engagement farm. That's her whole shtick. And it's Kind of Piers Morgan stick as well, which is a point that one of the panelists actually brought up. And Piers was very much not happy about him making that point. I don't think I should be blamed for getting on someone who is literally at the center of a quite big news story in America for harassing a famous star. Do you, Hassan? No, she, it was for clout. She was doing it for clout. That's why she went on the show also for clout, clout. which you were correct on pointing out that using the ongoing ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza and what's happening to the Palestinian people uh, as, a, as a vehicle to, to d create more social clout for yourself, social capital for yourself, is pretty, pretty disingenuous, pretty okay, messed up. I have up, to jump but, in, though, uh, though, because isn't that not, what everybody's I, doing? Isn't well, well, that what this, well, show, isn't that well, what this show is also doing? Because well, you're talking about is create political clout, well, to hang on. create okay. noise, I, I'll come back to, to get clicks, to make money. Oh, listen... Let's not all be disingenuous, no, right? but the whole We're conversation, all in, and on. actually, Crackhead Barney isn't that different to you. Well, actually, and, and Crackhead Barney said it herself. She said, we're no different. And I kind of agree with Crackhead Barney. I mean, he's not wrong. And as you're going to see, that was the only time that that guy was right throughout the course of this entire conversation. But Pierce Morgan and Crackhead Barney, they are at different ends of the same spectrum because Hassan is right that it is gross of crackhead Barney to use the ongoing genocide as a vehicle to clout farm for yourself. But I mean, it's clear that Piers Morgan kind of does the same thing, albeit to a lesser extent, obviously. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, Piers Morgan is continuing to play the middle and both sides, the ongoing genocide in Gaza, so he can keep portraying himself as this impartial moderator of these heated debates that keep going viral. And I think that's disingenuous. You know, it's also frustrating to see him complain about people talking over each other after bringing on unhinged guests and then teeing them off against the people that are trying to actually make substantive points. For example, Hassan gave a perfectly reasonable answer to a bias question that Piers Morgan asked about college protests. And rather than trying to press Hassan's opponent into giving a more thoughtful response, he disregards everything Hassan says and just basically lets the individual who already hates Hassan attack him. Like he just, he tees it up. And this is why there's no substance here. Let's watch. Any kind of protest is always going to have a litany of random people, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. You have to look at the actual tangible goals that the protest movement is stating they are interested in. And I think that those goals, and I think you will agree with me on this, Piers, I think those goals are pretty, pretty valid overall. I think that they want to, one, recenter the attention to the genocide that is ongoing in Gaza, and two, uh, demand that their tuition dollars do not go to uh, operations in Israel. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a, there's a campus. Uh, there is going to be a sister campus that uh, is being built in Tel Aviv right now for Columbia University. This means that Columbia University, which once housed the likes of the late great Edward Said and many others, and uh, that currently has many Palestinian students, 
who pay tuition for projects such as this one will not be able to go to that sister campus. I find that abhorrent, but it's everyday existence right. in Israel. Let me bring in. Let me bring in Emily. Uh, you've been listening to all this. Your response. With all due respect, Hassan, why do you feel that Columbia or any college for that matter owes you to divest from Israel? Why do you think your opinion is correct? Because so far, I heard the classic buzzwords, apartheid, discriminatory, ethnic cleansing, and genocide, which is funny because it's all the exact opposite. So if I may ask you, what about Israel is apartheid? <laughs> See, that right there is what happens when you take your hands off the steering wheel when you're a moderator, right? Because rather than addressing any of Hassan's points, she turned it into a debate about apartheid and whether or not the conditions in Israel fit that definition. And Hassan explained later on how it very much is a system of apartheid, obviously. But I mean, he shouldn't have to, right? That's an absurd thing to have to explain. It's like starting off an environmental debate about whether or not climate change is real or not, or starting off a gay rights debate about whether or not being gay is a choice. It's absurd, and it's meant to bring down the entire conversation. I mean, if somebody's take is so comically absurd that they're unable to stay within reasonable debate parameters, like, they're not going to contribute anything of value to the conversation. So why bring them on? But I mean, this is just one example with Piers Morgan. He'll bring on a lunatic, purposefully so, like Rabbi Shmuley, that'll just scream anti-Semitism and you support Hamas at his opponent over and over again. And then every single time this happens, Piers Morgan feigns shock when it ultimately devolves into a shit show. But I mean, don't pretend that that's not what you wanted. That's exactly what you wanted. It's not just the guest, though. It's also Pierce who's part of the problem because he will repeatedly press his guests for clarity for no good reason other than to, I guess, make himself feel like a real journalist. But I mean, if the goal is to have a substantive conversation, shit like this grinds the entire fucking discussion to a halt. And that happened in this interview as well, unsurprisingly. And Hassan's response to Piers nuanced trolling was so cathartic to see because he was not having it. That's fine. Just to clarify, Hassan, I can't quite work out whether you said you do think October the 7th was an unjustified act of revolution or whether you changed your mind. So can you clarify? I think that violent means of maintaining an apartheid is inevitably going to yield violent retaliation. So this was it, was is it justified? something that is completely avoidable. Was it justified? Civilian deaths are never justified. You know what, Hassan? Hassan, just before I come to the, the two uh, people who are with me here, I just, I just need some clarity here because it seems like you're dancing around whether you think... October the Piers, 7th was justified or not. Why are we doing not? this? Why are we doing this back and forth masturbation? I've already given you yeah, my Piers, fucking why position. Are you doing this? I'm He's sick happy. and tired it's of Jews repeating it over and over again. Okay. Hassan is 100% correct. It is a meaningless exercise. And as you saw, I had to cut out part of that clip because that psychopath interrupted Hassan to scream at him for like a minute or so. But after a back and forth between the two of them, Piers then decided to pretend to be disappointed that they weren't willing to have a reasonable discussion like two adults. And basically, it turned into a conversation about how unproductive the conversation is, which that's also not very productive. But I think that Hassan's response to that insincere virtue signaling from Pierce was valuable because he pointed that out and explained that, you know, here's what we should actually be talking about. This is going to always have, this is going to always be a very heated discussion, yeah. okay? Having a conversation about how heated this discussion is, is utterly unproductive. Every single moment that we use on air, not talking about every single, every single uh, university building being desecrated, destroyed. Uh, the fact that well, we're having this conversation on the eve of hundreds of mass graves being unearthed right now in in uh, many different parts of Gaza around hospitals that Israel had laid siege to is disgusting. I agree. I came on here, as I have done last time as well, and as I will probably do in the future as well, with one simple goal in mind, which is to address all of the misinformation that surrounds stuff like this. As far as the crackhead Barbie thing goes, yeah, she's a random TikTok influencer who gives a shit about what she has to say. She's obviously doing it for clout. But the students over at Columbia, okay, the students that I have talked to at the Columbia University Apartheid Divest group, the students that I've talked to from Jewish Voice for Peace. Um, all right, Emily, uh, let me just ask you the same thing I asked Hassan. 
when you guys scream at each other and call each other terrorists, it doesn't obviously achieve anything other than it becomes unintelligible to the audience. So I don't know if you noticed towards the end of that clip, but they cut off Hassan when he was trying to make a point. I didn't put that edit in there. If I do an edit to a clip that I'm showing you, I'll do a little white flash so that way you know that I did that. But they chose to cut off Hassan as he was trying to make a really good substantive point, like Pierce said he wanted them to do, but then he was cut off mid-sentence. Now, I don't know if that was purposeful or just an editing mistake. Either way, after Hassan tries his best to recalibrate and set the conversation on a more productive course, we then cut back to Pierce Morgan complaining about how bad it is that they can't have a productive conversation when Hassan is trying to offer the substance you say you're looking for, but you edit that out, either purposefully or not on purpose, but you cut that out. So what do we really want here? What's the goal here, right? Now, after the interview, Hassan actually tried to explain what he wanted to accomplish here, which was pretty obvious. He wanted to actually hash out some important details, but it turns out they weren't interested in substance because Hassan doesn't even know why that portion of the interview was cut either. This is the reason why I'm there. They told me we're supposed to be talking about we're supposed to be talking about campus activism and the anti-Semitism that's like rising on campuses or whatever. So I'm trying to literally fucking steer the steer the conversation back to that. But of course, because I'm doing that, Piers is going to fucking cut me off again. At the Columbia University Apartheid Divest group, the students that I've talked to from Jewish Voice for Peace. Um, all right, Emily, uh, l let me just ask you. Wait, what? Why did he cut that? Yeah, so don't tell me that Piers Morgan gives a shit about having a substantive or meaningful conversation if you are literally going to edit out portions of the interview where your guest is trying to do just that. Hassan is trying to do what you say you want, and you cut that part out. So stop with the bullshit. It's just, it's so frustrating. But I mean, if it's frustrating for you as a viewer and me, as somebody who's also watching, imagine how annoying it must have been for Hassan. Because there's a point where Hassan, uh, he just goes off on the guy with the pink hair because he chimes in inexplicably to make a non-point and pretend like he's offended at something that Hassan said, which wasn't warranted at all. And Hassan's response was so hilarious to me because he just unleashed on him. So let's watch. Why are you dehumanizing the hospital? because I have no problem admitting the Palestinians deserve I'm better. Not. I feel terrible You're using the them casualties. as a political pawn. I can say Hassan. that. If you cared about you the hostages, can't. you would Hassan. be in Tel Aviv right now. Using the the right, let, me bring in, let me bring in James. Let me Hassan bring in James, please. Let me bring in James, please. I'm sorry that I can't care about the Please, Hassan. let me bring in James. I agree with both of you. Sorry, can you please, when I say stop talking, please stop talking. We've got four people here. James. If anyone is using hostages, surely it's Hamas, Hassan. How can you say that? How can you how can you use that argument? That's that's a crazy thing to say. It's Hamas that mean, have that taken argument? these there people from their homes. Tens of thousands of people in Israel. Their like, there are currently tens of thousands of Israeli citizens right now in the pro uh, right now in the streets of Israel in the streets of Tel Aviv outside of Benjamin Netanyahu's house protesting every single day. What are they protesting? They're protesting for Benjamin Netanyahu to facilitate a ceasefire with Hamas so that they can actually bring the hostages home. That is precisely the but number one goal if, uh, of the family the members of the hostages. Who and is if using anyone the on this panel was no, being even a little question. bit honest, you, you they changed? would recognize You're the reality that, question. listen, just listen. You didn't listen to my question. Listen to, listen to what I'm saying and you will understand perhaps what I'm trying That's to imply very patronizing. here. Uh, Utilizing the hostages. Yeah, I am being patronizing. I don't know who the fuck you are, and you're over here chirping, chirping all the way from fucking London about Palestine and doing a both sides are fucking fine type bullshit. Where uh, you're talking about how you want to fucking free Palestine, but also simultaneously, you know, both sides got a lot, uh, a lot going on. Shut the fuck up. You don't know anything. Okay? I, I don't give a shit that. about what your perspective I said, uh, is. I, you, yeah, I you, agree. Hassan doesn't quite, like what you have to say, so Hassan. you're wrong. It's not, it's Hassan's way or the highway. I mean, you wow. are, you really are. There is no both sides on a genocide. Is there a really both sides on a genocide? There is no both sides. Well, this Hassan being a dick to that guy was 100% warranted in my opinion. In fact, I would have supported Hassan being even more mean to him because at that point in the interview, it was like minute 25, 30, he kept 
having to respond to insincere bullshit just like that again and again and again. And at some point, it just becomes grating when you're trying to have this conversation. You're actually trying to engage in good faith and you keep getting cut off because of dumb bullshit, right? Now, the lady who called him a terrorist, to give you some additional context, kept bringing up the hostages in response to atrocities that Hassan talks about that were committed by the Israeli government. And she uses the hostages clearly as a propaganda tool for purposes of deflection. Now, Hassan made the, made the correct point that Netanyahu is actually being protested by Israelis who have family members that are hostages because his genocidal actions are endangering them too. So if you care about the hostages as much as you say you do, which I believe that that woman does not, you should support a ceasefire because a ceasefire protects not just the safety of Gazans, but the safety of the hostages as well. But the pink hair guy wasn't talking as much. So I guess he felt like he had to butt in at some point and he chose that point where he decided to tell Hassan how offended he was while completely missing the fucking point that Hassan was making. It's so frustrating. But I do want to bring it back to Pierce because towards the end, he challenges the idea that this is a genocide and you're going to see why. But after having multiple guests on explaining this to him again and again, I just can't not think that he's playing dumb on purpose at this point. So this is what I mean. Interesting the word genocide, because I've listened to all this fractious debate, everyone talking over each other. The truth is that actually only one side is publicly said that they wish to pursue a genocide, and that is Hamas. Hamas, Hamas. after October the 7th, through their official spokesman on camera, said they wanted to do it again and again and again. That is the purest articulation oh of a genocide imaginable. And the one thing I never hear from the pro-Palestinian side you is really what Israel Pierce, was actually... Pierce, hang on. Pierce, no, don't Pierce. interrupt me. So one Hamas I haven't asked official, you a question yet. One Hamas guy... Uh, sorry, I but need to ask ridiculous. you a question. You're being a ridiculous person. Do you know, I'm not You're being, being a ridiculous, ridiculous person. person. I'm just saying, Who, nobody ever tells how me... how many Israeli officials, even on your show, have said, we should keep doing what we have been doing to Gaza over and over again? How does that not register in the same genocidal intent? If you think what that dude was saying, which was, by the way, ridiculous what he was saying, Saying, the Hamas official was saying is that we're going to do October 7th yeah. over and over again. But he said it. We are justified in doing it over and over again. I don't. Yes, I find that to be abhorrent. However, what you fail to recognize is that's the genocidal intent, but not Amalek. That's the genocidal intent, but not saying we are fighting human animals. And that's why we have to cut off their food, their water and their electricity. That was Defense Minister Joev Galat. There we go with that. the lies Benjamin, again. So by now, you're probably noticing this common theme where whenever Hassan is talking for an extended period of time without interruption, that lady will butt in. And whenever she butts in, it's not like she's making a particularly intelligent point or trying to refute what he's saying. She just butts in to cut him off and talk over him, right? The goal here is to stop Hassan from dispelling Israeli propaganda, which I think he was doing pretty effectively. That's why she kept doing it. It's an effective debate tactic because if you can't respond with substance and you don't know how to respond and you know you're objectively incorrect, then you just talk over your opponent because then neither of you will be able to get the point across. And that's apparently better for her than just one person. And Hassan, in this instance, getting the point across. But it's so bizarre that Piers, after interviewing countless advocates for Palestinian human rights, he still is unable to discern the difference between someone saying something genocidal and a country literally doing a fucking genocide. He doesn't know the difference between words and actions. And I mean, he's a dumb guy, but I don't think he's that dumb. I think he's pretending. So, I mean, he can pretend to be frustrated with the fireworks and mud slinging on his show, but we all know that is exactly what he wanted. He created the conditions and chose the panelists that would facilitate that shit show that he wanted. But then he complains about it. Mm, that's just, that's fake. That's bullshit. That's virtue signaling, right? He knows that this is exactly what he wants, and that's what people come to see. Again, as that insufferable pink hair guy pointed out at the beginning, Piers Morgan is just a less extreme version of Crackhead Barney. And that point was like the one insightful thing that that guy said throughout the entire fucking interview. I kid you not. But in conclusion, Piers Morgan should probably just stop pretending to be a real journalist at this point who cares about important conversations because we all know that that's bullshit. It's disingenuous. He wants the spectacle. He wants the mudslinging. And rather than pretending as if he's above it all... 
he should just own the fact that his show has just devolved into the political equivalent of the Jerry Springer show. That's fine. But don't pretend that you're a serious journalist. Don't pretend that you actually want debate. You want people to yell at each other. You choose guests who always yell over their opponents. That's what you want. So, like, don't pretend that this isn't what you asked for because you know it's what you want. That's what gets the views. Just own it. Like, stop being disingenuous. Just fucking own it. You hack. Were you acting like a baby?